sure you'll get them eventually. Anyway, we're sitting with one of the most underrated animals out in the African bush. Is the impala. I feel so sorry for these guys because no one gives them really much attention. And they are such beautiful creatures, especially in the wintertime in late afternoon light. That orange kind of coat just comes alive when that golden hour kind of hits. Um, and they really are incredibly pretty. And I suspect that if they were rare and there weren't many of them, that people would really want to see them just because they have these beautiful markings and obviously quite cool shaped horns as well. That makes them something that, you know, some people would probably want to photograph quite a lot. It's amazing how things are. Mm, it, does. it does have a milky eye. It's Hukumari's mate. Do you reckon they were in a, in a bar fight together, Seb? Maybe they went to the same same party together and both of them got into trouble. Um, <laughs> Nikki's laughing at me. She thinks I'm being funny, but um, it's true. Maybe the two of them are, are you know, are go back a long way. Um, a huge belly too, yeah. You see, he's a, he's a regular bar visitor. He's got his little, what we call in South Africa, beer boop, which is basically like a little beer tummy um, from drinking too much beer. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe this is what's happening here, is that this guy is just a, you know, one of those that was always at the local watering hole and then so unfortunately somebody maybe hit him in the face and now he's got a milky eye. Shame, man. Not nice. No, I'm joking. Of course, that's not what's happened to this impala. This impala, for some reason, has developed a cataract of some sort over that eye or some sort of issue, um, which is interesting because, obviously, you know, you would think that that would be something that would affect the ability for a prey animal to survive, but just like a predator can survive with one eye, so, you know, impalas can too. Funny enough, when I was in the Serengeti, we saw a wildebeest. There was this kind of... I tell this wildebeest that you could... Probably the one wildebeest that you could identify... Um, through this mass of migratory herds. But there was this one wildebeest that had a completely scarred over white eye. I don't even know if I have a photo of it. I might actually. Um, it was pretty insane to actually see. I was kind of quite sort of surprised by the injury itself just from a point of view that it looked seriously badly damaged and like something had actually gouged at the eye itself. So I've got just a photo of, of a screen because... That's all I could have. So I'm going to try and zoom it in a little bit. But if you look at that eye, it's a bit tricky, I know, Seb. I'm sorry. And given the light and everything else and the darkness of the actual frame and all my finger smudges. Sorry, man. Um, so you can see there's the eye there. But it was all scarred as though the eye had fallen out and then this kind of scar tissue had come over that eye. So it was a bit of a weird... Oh, sorry, Seb. A uh, bit of a weird injury, but he was quite recognizable, and it was an old wildebeest, and I wonder how many kind of tails that wildebeest has. And, um, oh, there we go. So now Nikki's saying I might have to tweet it for you and do hashtags for live. Nikki, if I was using Twitter at the moment, I would. I haven't used Twitter in about two months. So, <laughs> um, for those of you that have tried to contact me on Twitter, I'm very sorry. Um, I haven't been using it at all. I've, I don't know why. I just... I've been off of social media a little bit of late, and so um, really it's only Instagram that I've been on of late, to be honest. So, like I say, I apologize if anybody has sent me a message or something. I don't, I'm not trying to be rude, I just, I don't know. It's been nice to have a break from such things. Anyway, um, I'm sure this Impala is just testament to how well they can actually survive. The fact that it's got one eye and is um, still here. Is he going to go to the toilet now? Delightful. Classy fellow, this. Just, he just really is kind of bringing out his reputation. Now, I'm not sure if he's going to urinate or defecate at this stage, but we're going to get some something coming out. He's certainly standing as though... There we go. Tail up. Yep. The less I say about this, the better. Like I said, he's a healthy boy, isn't he? Maybe that's why he's... Tummy was so swollen is that he needed to get rid of some pellets. <laughs> anyway, he certainly has gotten rid of those pellets now. Um, Darby, could his injury have come from another impala? Possible, but it doesn't look like a, a external injury there. It almost looks like a filming over of the eye, a little bit different to kind of what Hukumori had, but I suppose it's very possible. You know, during the rut, these guys hit each other with their horns and kind of nick the eye. It's, I mean, it could it easily happen. Um, and so I'm... I, 
wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. It just doesn't look like an injury to that eye. It almost looks more like, like I say, like a cataract that's developed um, over time. But it's not this incredibly old impala either. If you look at the shape of the horns, the horns are indicative of age, and those horns haven't spread out yet too much, so it's not like it's an old impala whose eyes have kind of, you know, the cornea is thickened in any way. Um, I, I mean, I'm not sure. It's very possible, though, that, that another impala is to blame. Maybe it was Hukumuri, um, like I say, that gave him a little nick over the eye, and it was a trade-off. He got, Hukumuri got horned in the eye, and he got clawed. Maybe that's what happened. Alice, a veggie kebab after a night out, very possible. Um, although this impala, just judging by its classiness of uh, going to the toilet facing our direction, is maybe not going to go for a veggie kebab. That sounds very sophisticated. I think maybe this um, impala is going to go f to one of those <laughs> dodgy street vendors and get himself a veggie pie from a garage um, in South Africa. Is that a thing in the rest of the world, actually? Because in South Africa, people get inebriated and, and drink fast. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Nikki. Um, people get in completely inebriated and then they go to the local um, fuel station and there's normally these dodgy little shops inside there that you really would never buy food from but because people are inebriated they feel like it's a good idea at 2 o'clock in the morning to buy a pie slash samosa that has probably been sitting there for four days and that this is not going to make them feel ill. So, you know, people do it. But um, that's what I think this impala is probably eating, is uh, some sort of dodgy vegetable pie from the local fuel station. Um. <laughs> so Nikki's saying this is the best impala sighting she's ever had. Well, there you go, Nikki. You, you know, it's going to rise to fame. It's, it's almost like... Um, I suppose Jerry Springer in a way, you know, this impala maybe would appear on something like Jerry Springer because Jerry Springer rose to fame by being completely out of this world in terms of just absolute ludicrousy that I'm pretty sure is acted, but, you know, it's one of those things. People find entertainment in these kind of things sometimes. I, I really am not sure, but I certainly think our impala friend, he also looks like he's got a little hickey on his neck there. Do you think he had a late night out last night? It's a Sunday, after all. Maybe he had a rough weekend. Sebastian, what do you think? Yeah, on his other side of his neck, it looked as though there was a little hickey. Maybe he maybe spent some time with the ladies during the weekend. Let's get a little bit closer and see if we can see it. So, Sweet History, you say it happens in the States as well. You see, there's always, some, it's always the same thing. There's... You know, different cultures, different places in the world, but there's certain things that transcend culture. And the dodgy pie from the fuel station after a night out transcends these things. In, in England, it's to the local, I suppose, chippy or something like that that you would get. Now, I wonder if we can actually see its neck. Yes, look, Seb, you can see its neck. It's got a little, little mark there. Like I say, maybe it's had a, a busy night out with the girlfriend. Um, you can just see it's where the folds of the skin on. And you're speaking as though you're speaking from experience. Um, you say there's nothing else open at that time, only the pie cart, and so that's why people end up going there. I suppose that's true, Anne. Although I feel like, you know, you'd be much better off as maybe going and getting some sort of you know, pre-packaged things that are like biscuits or something like that. A pie to me at that time of the night just really seems like a recipe for... Um, <coughs> Are you all right there, Sebastian? Oh, I've got a bit of a cough, sorry. You've got a bit of a cough? That's okay, buddy. You don't worry. You don't feel bad about your cough. Um, it, it just feels like a recipe for gastritis or um, food poisoning. And so I would be very hesitant to head towards any pie shop at 2 o'clock in the morning or garage pie. You don't know how long they've been there for. Exactly. Susan, you're on the right beat there. Don't let your Monday spoil your fun day, Sunday. Well, Sunday fun day actually is, I suppose, a big thing. Maybe in the Impala world it just goes to the next level. Um, I wonder if this is going to, you know, we had Trials Dam, so maybe this is what the local waterhole was, and now that it's dried up, he's actually having to go to the wrong side of the tracks, and that's why he's ended up with this milky eye and, you know, hickeys on his neck and behaving like a hooligan, pooping in our direction. Yes, we're talking about you. 
He's just eating his grass as if he doesn't care at all. <laughs> anyway, this has been a ridiculous Impala segment, so I'm going to carry on and see what else I can find that I can talk about that isn't as ridiculous as this. And while I do that, let's send you across to Lauren and find out if she knows about um, late-night pies in Scotland.